Sup. Sup. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Like the pink coat, bro. Thank you very much. Pants to match. Um, first of all, how do you feel about your performance? Uh, you know, you're always going to be a critique of yourself and be a little bit like, ah, you know, sloppy, a couple here and there. But I felt like I stayed composed when I got hit, when I hit the guy. Um, and I showed a lot of different aspects of my game. So it's just the beginning of, of the era of Matrix. And uh, it's just showing a lot of my abilities. And I just can't wait to keep get the ball rolling. You know what I mean? You landed some big shots on him, including a head kick early on. Were you surprised at any point that, like, man, this guy's still here? Yeah, man. Uh, I usually, well, I hit it with the, the Kai, K-A-I. Uh -huh. And that part's more of, you know, the foot. Uh, if I land with the dough, it's more shin. I felt Because I got a couple of head kick knockouts and confident with that. And he also was really confident in his right hand. I hit him in that. I think it was the first with that right head kick. And I was like, damn, that guy took that shot. I thought it would have put him out. And when he took that, I was like, okay. It made me feel good inside because I was like, I'm in for a fight. You know, this is the top 15 dude in the UFC at the big show of my dreams. Like, this is just, like, shit just got real. You know, so, like, then he hit me with a couple of his big right hands, and he was, you know, doing this. And he hit me with a couple, and we were going back and forth. I was like, hell yeah, man. So it's good to get that type of fight because usually I'm very uh, technical or I'll try to take a guy out on the ground or – uh, standing, so it was good to get one of those fights in there. And uh, I see the schmo down there. I see him, what's up, what's up? You, uh, you talk about he landed some shots on you. He worked your body pretty good. I mean, I don't know how much that affected you, but did you feel that that was his strategy, going for the body, trying to slow you down? Yeah, you know what? I've been working for this fight. I know he had a big right hand, and I really love body shots. I like to go body shot, leg kick, body shot, head kick, body upper. And I didn't throw as many body shots in this fight because I just was uh, a little hesitant that he was just going to come over the top and throw that, that right hand. Um, so, you know, f from my point of view, I like to work to the body. But when he was going to the body, I was kind of just feeling him out a little bit. And I did definitely feel in the third, I was like, damn, okay, like it got, it affected my cardio just a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's when I, I pushed on the brakes just a little bit and then I came back. But, uh, yeah, and then I landed a switch kick to his body. I know he felt that, but I like that spinning back kick fade away off the cage. You know, uh, that was one of my signature moves. Nice. And it, uh, it looked like when things were equal on the striking, you had the explosive takedown ability to get into the, to the canvas. Did you know you would have that in your back pocket if you needed it, or was that something that you just found it in the fight? Uh, I already know I've had that, but uh, that's just another thing added to my game, you know? So, like... There's a lot of areas that I haven't even shown to the, to the audience yet, but it's always good to just have things to score points. And if you could just score a quick takedown without telegraphing so much to get knocked out, um, it's something great to have in your back pocket, especially in these cage fights when uh, rounds are close or the judges may have uh, close fights, you know, especially Song Dong. He's had some controversial maybe uh, decisions in the past, and I wanted to make sure that I glued those uh, takedowns and landed those as well. Nice work, man. And well, last one for me. What's next for you? It's a great fight, great performance. What do you want to go to the matchmakers and ask for? Oh, I'm going to the top, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home and make some decisions, but I just can't wait to keep working my way up. And we're going to see in time uh, what's going to happen, but I'm going to make some moves. Kyler, right here. What's up, man? Doing? Good. Uh, you're you're only 25 in a pretty stacked division. You obviously have the your physical prime just even coming. Is are, are you even thinking about that? Like the like how much better you can get moving forward? I like to think like that. You know, as far as opportunity and window of opportunity. But I do also know on the opposite end, it's like you know it doesn't really matter. There's people that start in this sport late. But I know that at this point in my career right now, there is no you know, putting on the brakes. There is no chilling out. There is no going back. And that's when, you know, when I, I went on the Ultimate Fighter and I, I took a, a loss, I really, like, you know, split decision. I mean, I had to go back and learn. And that was, like, my, uh, what was that? My, like, uh, what do they call it? Like, an internship. And I felt like that was an internship. But at the time, I was, like, what, 21, 22. And now, like, I got that experience. And now it's the time. You know, and that made me have that hunger and fire inside. And that plus my mental composure and my abilities as a fighter and as a human being, I feel like it's all coming together. And now it's just 
just going forward and like I just cannot wait and this part right now it, it's all it's all forward it's all forward energy that's it well going off of that the 135 pound division a lot of people said was the most competitive division last year are you just looking to stay active at least so you can continue to just keep rising yeah I'm gonna stay active try to get three four fights a year that's uh, my big goals and just keep having fun you know I'm not going to be like, oh, I have to do something. or No, I'm just going to have fun, be me, go all the way, be Kai Matrix, and show everybody. And not just them, whether the audience is just me or, you know, if we got audience back, and got, you know, 1,000 people, 5,000 people, or just like this, I'm still going to bring that energy. And uh, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's in the octagon or outside of the octagon, I'm going to bring that energy every day. And finally, uh, you had a couple teammates fighting on this card. Are you one that has to step away from watching your teammates fight, or do you like to like to focus on yourself just in case they don't come out on top, or do you are you solely focused on your whole team as for every fight? Uh, again, I I'm always yes and no to everything. I'm always it goes both ways. But for this one too, you got to be about the team. You got to be about your people. It's all about communication. It's all about community. Without having people there with you to share the journey with, it's just lonely. You know, and it sucks having trying to have to hold the world on your back and do fighting by yourself. It's like, no, you want to have people helping you out. You know, you guys, UFC, everybody being able to work together. And it, it really takes the weight off your shoulders. But then at the same time, when you got to focus on yourself and I got to focus on my fight again, I'm not going in there and fighting, you know, uh, for somebody else and somebody else is not fighting for me. I'm the one stepping in there and doing the work. So at the end of the day, you got to take care of business. A great victory, Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get you on my pod one of these days. We'll definitely do it. Uh, do you 100% expect a number next to your name Tuesday? Yes. And then for your opponent, do you want them to be in that top 10, top 15? Could they be outside that? What are your expectations? Um, again, so I'm always yes and no to everything, but I do expect that. But if something happens and you don't and you just, like, get a fight and you want to whoop somebody's ass real quick... I might, you know, get paid, so we'll see. What do you got, Aljamain Sterling or Peter Yan? Ooh, man. That small octagon, I'm going to have to go with Yan because his, just, his pressure and his, uh, his ability to come forward with a good guard and just kind of do some things. And we saw in the, his fight with Aldo, you know, he started, he can pick up his pace, and he has a lot of uh, mental fortitude, and he has a really good... Um, endurance and I know Aljamain does as well and that guy's got you know some heart and he's coming in there with with a whole spirit of fight so it's just the style matchups weird Aljamain is not your typical fighter and uh, we'll see if he can get the anaconda style like grips on him and, and get him down but even if he does there you know Jan is he pops up really quick and his Russian wrestling seems to be pretty legit Congrats. Yeah, congrats, man. For you, because you got those shades and you look like you're doing good, bro. You look like you're doing better than me. You top 15 in the media world? All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.